Hi everyone, how are you doing? Once again, I'd like to welcome you to Moments of Encounter. Hope you've had a blessed week and a blessed day. Today, I want to speak to somebody out there on what I call saved but addicted. Saved but addicted. And I want us to understand what I'm saying. That man of God, what are you saying? Are you saying that somebody can be saved and yet is addicted? Yes, there are two levels of addictions. There's addiction to God and there's addiction to the wrong things of life. So I want you to know that you can be a believer and you are struggling with some certain things, addictions. Yes, there are people in the Bible that have struggled with addictive things and addictive strongholds in their life. I want us to look at some scriptures that will let us know that a man can be addicted and is saved. Here is Apostle Paul in the book of Romans chapter 7. And I want us to read from verse 19. It can be a long read, but I'll be very fast so that we can put a proper context to it. What does Romans 19, 7, 19 says? It says, For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. The evil, when we say addiction, everything is good, everything is meant to be balanced. Everything is supposed to be at a normal level, but whatever you start doing that goes out of hand, then that is what we call addiction. There are some you don't even have to start with if you're a believer, but there are believers who are struggling with some works of the flesh. Some are struggling with sexual addictions, pornography, masturbation. You have believers that have invested money in sexual toys and yet we are believers that the enemy is pushing them deep down into what we call terrific and unspoken kind of acts of sexual perversions. We have believers that are craving for things that are not meant to be found among Christians, home, Christian marriages. We are believers that want to exploit into what I call the depth of what of, of what is known as sexual occultic practices. And we also have believers who are fighting bad attitudes. We have believers who are engaged in what I call every form of alcoholism, drugs, addictions. We have believers who are believers who are addicted to nightlife. We have believers that when we look at their own form of addiction is to things that the Holy Spirit is telling them to live. We are believers who are addicted to social media. Yes, social media. A lot of people are addicted to different apps that is on their phone and that is taking their time and taking their life. We are believers who are addicted all of a sudden now to what we call all these money bets and all those kind of practices, believers who are getting into it, and yet they are in church on Sunday, yet they've once read that confession that I accept you as my Lord and Savior. We are believers who are workers in the house of God, and there's this subtle addiction that nobody knows about, is under the cover. We have believers who are addicted to the spirit of lust. The Bible says it there, it says, if I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I would do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. And I want us to look at what verse 24 says. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? But thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Many believers, many Bible scholars have said this is the story of Apostle Paul, that Apostle Paul also had things that he was fighting. Yes, I, I can say that, but because this is the book of Romans, one of those books that spoke about the nature of sin, the nature of man, spoke about the law and also spoke about the flesh. And I want you to know that whenever you are struggling and battling addictions, one tr truth is this, is that the flesh outweighs the spirit in your life, just to put that at the back of your mind. And let also listen to me that most addictions are really rooted in what I call spiritual battles. They are rooted in spiritual forces. There are people in the Bible that the Lord dwelt over them and yet they were addicted to the negative things. A man like Noah, you could say that at the later part of his life, we were recording that he had this problem, drinking too much was part of his issues. When you look at a man like Samson, Samson was so anointed from birth, but yet he had this addiction to go back to a place where he would be destroyed. When somebody was asking him, 
But the source of his what? Of his strength. When somebody would joke, playfully joke with him and say, oh, your enemies are upon him. And he would taste it like there. Oh, it's a joke. He, he was accepting all those things as a joke. That's not a joke. That's what we call the power of getting addicted to something that is wrong. When we look at the life of the prodigal son, the prodigal son was a young boy who was addicted to that reckless living. The Bible says he took all his inheritance and he squandered it. Not once. It started gradually. When we look at that man and called Saul in the Bible. Saul had what I call addiction to the spirit of envy because he had no reason to what to have any issues with a young man called David. But that's what addiction can do. And thank God for that. In the New Testament, we read about this man some weeks back on this podcast. We spoke about Demas that has forsaken me and gone after the cares of this world. And I made you realize that those are the things that happen that people see. But nobody knew when Demas had an addiction with the things of the world, when he was going back to the things of the world. There are believers who are addicted on drugs. There are believers who are addicted on Weeds are believers who are addicted on aphrodisiacs, they are believers who are addicted to wrong kind of things, and you are there, you are saved, but you are still fighting it. I have a word for you today that is flesh at work in your life. That is it, just from this scripture. The Bible talks about the old man that you are still giving its grace in you, and the old man is stronger than your spirit. And once the old man leads you to something very well, he will call on strange spirits to come and look for you, he will call on things that are not meant to be to come and dwell in your heart so i'm saying to somebody out there are you addicted to anything let's call a spade a spade whatever takes your attention from the good biblical way of living whatever you are doing gradually that you know the holy spirit is telling you in a subtle way that these things are not right you know that those things that are being mentioned when you are in church when you are listening to the word of god those things that poke at you those things that you know that this kind of attitudes this kind of nature should not be in the life of a believer i want to show you one scripture right there in the book of proverbs i want you to see a scripture that talks about serious addiction and i want somebody out there to listen to this scripture a lot of us are fighting we have believers who are under the spell of what of alcohol the book of proverbs 23 29 says who has woe who has sorrow who has strife who has complaints who has needed bruises who has bloodshot eyes those who linger over wine who go to sample bowls of mixed wine who do not gaze at wine when it is red when it sparkles in the cup when it goes down smoothly it ends it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper that is what addiction does to you look at it if those who have woes those are the people that bible calls your addictions your woes bible calls your addictions your sorrows a lot of people are carrying what i call spiritual disease now because i see addiction as a disease there are things that you don't that affect you that take your life away they are carrying physical disease because they just kept on running with it you see someone that has been told stay away from alcohol and yet he can't just he cannot do it you have people that we are looking at and by the time as we are checking them we say oh stay away from this sexual life that you are practicing this this sexual perversion say no there is nothing there before you know it they have gotten to that level whereby they now have every form of what i call physical disease in their body just because they did not listen we have those who want to grow in god but they are fighting masturbation they are fighting lust after they do it every spiritual ground that they have gained everything just goes down they go back down and they start again i tell you that is the power of flesh just like apostle paul said say oh wretched man that i am says who shall deliver me from what from this body of what of sin that is what i'm talking about when you put your value on the flesh the flesh will control you the flesh is your old man the flesh is your sinful nature mr flesh is the life you lived outside christ not in christ you cannot please god without you dealing with that flesh and i'm speaking to somebody that have been a prisoner to flesh that when you realize that you are under the flesh how do you get out of the flesh then you must be ready to what to dwell in the realm of the spirit and how do you overcome the things of the of the flesh with the things of the spirit is for you to start asking the spirit of god to help you one of the ways 
a madman will realize that he or she is mad is that he realizes that I am what? I am mad. And one of the ways you will get out of addiction is that you realize that you need help. And you begin to ask God for help. And I want you to open your mouth and speak to one or two people, one or two, three people that can be accountable to. I tell you that once those people are genuine with God, they will raise an altar of intercessions for you because you can't fight it alone. And as we begin to do that, then there's one more thing that you need to do. And you will find out with me in the book of Luke chapter chapter 1 verse what verse 74 can we look at the book of Luke chapter 1 verse what verse 74 if you are a believer listening to me right now and you are addicted in any way you are addicted in any form of can be social media addiction I want us to look at that scripture the book of Luke chapter 1 verse what verse 74 this is very important to your walk with god and i tell you that it will help you break from every form of what of addiction what does it say there it is a very clear it says after we i want us to use the kjb version it says after we've been what being delivered Luke 1 74 that after we've been delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life if you are fighting addiction after you have asked the spirit of God to help you the next thing you need to do is to seek for deliverance the Bible says when you are delivered then you can now serve God in what in holiness and righteousness all those addictive spirits are out to do what they are out to make you unholy before god they are out to make you unrighteous before god but the bible says after you've been delivered there's a spirit of addiction there's a spirit of alcohol alcohol addiction there's a spirit of sexual addiction there's a spirit of masturbation there's a spirit of lust there's a spirit of living the life of what i call that reckless night riotous life that's the spirit that was in the prodigal son all these things are rooted in strange spirits and the next thing you need to do after you have prayed for this deliverance is to take conscious effort you can't be around places one of my biggest testimony was when a junk was brought to me and that junk recently and the junk said was crying and i said what happened and he said i don't want to see you again in my dream i said what happened I said, ever since they brought me to you, he said, I see you in my every night in my dream. I began to laugh. I said, it's not me. I'm sleeping on my bed. He said, I see you telling me, why are you still taking that drug? He said, he said, I've stopped the hard drugs, but the only challenge, I've stopped the alcohol. The only challenge I have now is cigarette. That is work in progress. I want to tell somebody that there is God because intercession was raised by the family members. So no matter how subtle you look at it and say, well, I can't kill myself. It's just, let me just hold on to this thing. After the prayers, then do that self-will of getting away from the addiction. Make it your culture. Stay away from those things. Stay away from the friends. Stay away from the parties. Stay away from the nightlife. Stay away from the movies that you know will lead you into it. Stay away from the things, the dressings that will push you into it. I tell you, you will enjoy the presence of God. And the next thing is that you must learn to host the presence of God. When you are free from all these things, let me tell you, the addictive spirits, they try to go, just like the scripture tells us in Matthew, they go and hang around looking for a stronger spirit to come, but no one thing. But Apostle Paul said it, that, but thanks be to God that gives us what? The victory. If you read that scripture, he gives us victory. You have triumphed. He's just trying to charge back at you. You have the victory. I have seen junks in our generation leading Christian movement. I have seen people that have been deep in what I call prostitution. And now they are living, leading women of God. I want you to know, not leading women, they are leading women of God. There is room out for you, whatever the addiction is. I'm speaking to safe believers out there that you can be a believer and you can be addicted. You can be a believer and nobody knows, but you are doing it under the radar. Can you seek out for help? Can you make yourself accountable? Can you just know that there is a place of you realizing that you are putting emphasis on the flesh? And after emphasis on the flesh, the next thing you put emphasis on is that you need to be delivered. And you make the conscious effort of staying away from all those addictive things. Cut away from all those connections. Break it. I, I, I have somebody very close to me. 
I will just send the person a message on social media in some one of these apps and he will say, I didn't see it. I say, why? He said, because it's getting addictive and I ran away from it for three weeks. That's a conscious effort. Do you know if you stay away from those things, it's, it's became an habit because you were doing it regularly. And the same way, when you walk away from it, you'll be far from the habit because you have stopped doing it regularly. And I knew that the Lord will help you. Remember, you need to serve God in holiness and in righteousness. And if anything that doesn't want you to serve God in holiness and righteousness, is that which wants your work with God to fail. I pray for you that today, the Lord will break free every hidden addiction that you alone know that nobody knows. And I pray that you will walk in God's light and in God's truth. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Father, I pray for those who are connected to this meeting and they are fighting any form of addiction, but yet they are bearing your name. And Lord, you will save them. Give them victory over this addiction. Cause your presence to dwell over them. And let this addiction be a thing of the past upon them. And Lord, guide them into all truth. And I pray nothing will defy your garment again. I say it again. Nothing will defy your garment because that's the agenda to defy your garment. I pray your garment will no longer be defied so that you can stand in position of authority with God and in the place of spiritual revolution and that God will fulfill his purpose over your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I break every spirit of addiction from your heart. And I pray with this prayer, no more addictive control and controlling powers over your destiny. Every addiction to sexual perversions is broken. Addiction to drug is broken. Addiction to alcohol is broken. Addiction to nightlife is broken. Addiction to wrong friends is broken. I pray addiction to social media is broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. We'll pray. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining.